And can we talk now a bit about the, uh, the people that you've, uh, you've worked with in, uh, in the film industry? Because uh, you've, got, you've had a reputation throughout your career of uh, occasionally not getting on, which is putting it mildly, with some of the people you've worked with. Putting um, it very mildly. Yeah, very mildly. In fact, the first reported thing that I found of this was, was Brando, wasn't it, in Mutiny on the Bounty? Well, you didn't seem to get on at all, did you? Well, I, no, I didn't get on. And the thing is, sort of, Brando and I, 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 he was the star of the movie. And really, my first starring part was it came before I did Sporting Life. The only thing that kind of worried me about him was that he didn't sort of, he didn't turn up, you know. I tell you something interesting, you know, how actors, for instance, now, you know, in all this business about talking about Marl, I think he's a fantastic actor. Yes, well, I think he's like probably it. one of the greatest actors mm -hmm. of all time. <clears throat> His facility was so powerful. He mm -hmm. had all the facilities of almost everything, probably except, except comedy. I don't think he was a good comic. He tried comedy. But everything else, he had a marvelous facility. But how he developed things is extraordinary. How actors develop styles is very interesting. And Marlon style of, of developing style of acting is very interesting for those who are interested really in movies. Marlon developed a style of acting because in some strange way, he either didn't want to because of his method upbringing, that everything should be real, his, his lines, or else he actually couldn't remember. But he couldn't remember lines. Now, whether it was because he didn't want to or he couldn't. So what he would do is he'd do a scene with you and he'd have like, that's the camera there say here, and he would have beside the camera a big board, and the lines would be on the board, you see. And that's how he developed that terrific look, that great Brandonian look, as he's talking to you in a scene, and suddenly he will do this. <laughs> right? That's because, that's because he's looking at the lines. He's reading the lines. I remember, do you remember once? <laughs> it's true, it's true, I promise. And, 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 and I, I would have thought that one time, you know, when he was doing, remember doing Julius Caesar? <laughs> It probably happened because there's one marvelous part in Julius Caesar where, he, where this happens and he, he's, he's there and he's standing up in his toga and uh, he's doing, uh, he says, Almighty Caesar, dost thou rise so low? Art all thy glories, triumphs, spoils, shrunk to this little measure? Uh, uh. <laughs> now I know as sure as hell, Shakespeare never wrote that. <laughs> <Right? laughs> so then it happens and he goes, and then you'll see it happening. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend to <laughs> <laughs> He's reading it out. He's reading it out. 